I'm sure that many of you, as I did, tuned in to watch the Euro 2020 competition, or 2021, or whatever it was called. Now, as an Englishman, I'm not going to want to talk too much about it, but one thing I did want to mention was the lack of Norway. While the other three Nordic countries in mainland Europe, Sweden, Finland and Denmark, all qualified, Norway's last and only appearance was back in 2000. Now, while Norway definitely didn't have a bad sports record, I mean, they have more gold medals from the Winter Olympics than any other country on planet Earth, and they've qualified three times to the World Cup while Finland haven't at all. Their lack of presence in the recent international football competition compared to their neighbours is mirrored in single-seater racing. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Magnussen family name from Denmark, Ericsson or Peterson, the Super Swede, or any of the three Finnish champions of Rosberg, Hakkinen or Raikkonen. Yet, of the 770 F1 drivers, not a single Norwegian has driven a metre of a Formula 1 Grand Prix. However, and it's a massive however, Norwegian driver Dennis Hauger is currently leading the Formula 3 standings with an enormous 63 points, with just a maximum of 183 points left for grabs, meaning if he can keep that points margin for the next two rounds, he would have wrapped up the title by the second week of September. So surely such a dominant driver is destined for F1. Well, nothing in motorsport is ever that straightforward. Let's not forget that if last season's championship had fallen Islet's way, he would have had two F2 champions in a row without an F1 drive for the following season. And who's to say how Hauga could perform in Formula 2? So in this video, I thought I'd critically analyse how F1 worthy Dennis is and uncover the likelihood of most sports top tier seeing its first Norwegian driver in the upcoming years. But first, a bit about Halga. Well, firstly he was born in 2003. Yes, we could have a Formula 1 driver racing very soon, born in 2003. Raised in Orskog, about halfway between Norway's capital Oslo and the Norwegian-Swedish border, according to the Rebel website, Dennis joined his father in rallying when he was one, got his first quad bike when he was two, got a motocross bike at four, and then a go-kart at five. I mean, I know Red Bull likes starting their drivers young, but wow, okay. Anyway, I'll list a few of his younger karting achievements. Between 2011 to 2013, Dennis was on the podium in 62 out of 70 races nationally. During his second season in WSK in Italy in 2015, he was on the podium in 13 out of 14 races, seven of them being on the top step. And in 2016, he became the youngest ever DKM OKJ German champion, and in 2017, the youngest ever DKM OK champion. Now, just to put into context how well he performed during karting compared to other F1 drivers and F1 hopefuls, well, he finished seventh in the top European karting championship he did. And while that might seem disappointing, especially when looking at the drivers who beat the Norwegian, he did finish head of the highly rated Theo Port share. And only one champion of that series has reached F1, which of course is the one and only Max Verstappen. Interestingly, he didn't compete in the Senior World Karting Championship, the same championship that the likes of Norris, the Klerg and Verstappen have all finished in the top three in, but Red Bull clearly saw potential in the Norwegian and they signed him to their junior team for 2018. Hauger was placed in British Formula 4 for his first season in single-seater racing, which, while being a respected motorsport series, tends to be the cheaper, less reputable version of the Italian and German Formula 4. And while Dennis only finished fourth in the championship, albeit the highest placed rookie in the standings, that season gave him the crucial experience to finish runners-up in the German ADAC Formula 4 championship and to win the Italian Formula 4 championship, his results massively boosting his reputation. But things were about to take a big turn. Just quickly, one number which I'd like there to be a big turn in is the number of people subscribed to the channel. Currently only 4 of every 1000 viewers bother to click that red subscribe button and every subscriber means an awful lot to me, especially being a relatively small channel. So if you are liking the video so far and are nice enough to subscribe to the channel, I'd be greatly appreciative. So anyway, as I was saying, in 2020, Halga's performances would flip completely the other way. After a respectable 12th highest finish from the first four races in Formula 3, Halga scored his first points in Hungary and in the following race, he bagged a podium, with things surely looking on the up. Yet, those two points finishes would be his only all season, and a disappointing overall 17th in the championship was the lowest position an Italian Formula 4 champion had ever finished in the Formula 3 standings. Yet, Formula 3's top team Prima must have seen something, because after round 4 of 7 of the following year, 2021, he's absolutely dominating the Formula 3 championship, finishing in the top 5 in all but 3 of the opening 12 races. And let's not forget, this is technically a spec series with equal cars. So how is he doing so well all of a sudden? Well, let's not forget he's driving a Prema. While all the cars in Formula 3 are equal, Prema makes sure they have the best staff to tune the cars as well as possible, and since the creation of Formula 3 in 2019, they've easily wrapped up all four titles. Conversely, Hauke was the third driver for the less competitive high-tech team, whose car was very difficult to drive for him. High-tech were unwilling to change to a different setup philosophy in order to match Dennis's driving style, which became very frustrating for the Norwegian. Prema are much better at working out setups that help the drivers perform. But even without his dominant Italian team, the data suggests 
suggests Hauger will be close to the top of the standings. The Norwegian was teammates with Australian Jack Doohan for British Formula 4, in which Hauger finished one position behind his fellow rookie teammate. While Hauger's 2020 F3 season may have been disappointing with his solitary 14 points, Doohan failed to score any. Yet, with the experience and the increased knowledge of a second season, the Australian heads into the break second in the standings. So you can imagine Hauger wouldn't have been too far away, even with a worse team. Another contributing factor to Dennis's success is his intelligent driving. He's not taken any big risks, and as a result, he's had no stupid crashes. Instead, he looks after the tyres while watching those ferociously battle ahead, and as a result, he has the tyre life to push on at the end, and he often gains places in the closing stages of races. The first thing a person looks at when judging a driver is their championship results, and Halga knows that in order to win a championship, you have to be consistently scoring points, not going for dangerous manoeuvres in desperate attempts to win races. But the question remains, does Halga have what it takes to make it to F1? Well, currently, Dennis has 60.3 of the points available. If he keeps that percentage up, he'll have won the championship by an unprecedented point score for modern Formula 3 and GP3, with Russell and Ocon only taking home 59.9 and 58.6% in their exceptionally commanding seasons respectively. Russell holds the highest points margin of an F3 driver, with a stunning 79 point gap to Aitken, although Hauger is only 16 off that, with 9 races to go. Now some people will say Hauger's teammates aren't that competitive, that the field is weak, or that Hauger's had an extra year in F3 compared to the likes of Russell, but the truth of the matter is, you've got to be talented to be that dominant. On the contrast, some will say that Hauger will easily be in F1. Ocon was promoted straight to F1 after his incredible F3 season, and now look where he is, a race winner, and Russell should have won that race in Sakia at the end of 2020, with of course it being likely that he'll step onto the top step in F1 at some point during his career, and he only needed one season after Formula 3 to get to F1. And that was when he won the F2 Championship in his debut year, beating Norris and Albon to the title. It will be interesting to see what happens with Hauger in F2 next season. Schwartzman picked up 55.2 of the points in his 2019 F3 winning season, yet despite leading the championship early on, he strangely ended up off the pace and finished in fourth. But regardless of that result, the Russian has enough super points to be in F1. The main reason he's not in motorsports top tier is due to being in the stacked Ferrari Academy and the limited places in F1 currently available. Well, the worst thing about the Red Bull Academy is the harsh sackings. It also means that if you're good enough, you're going to F1. And if you're good enough at Alpha Tauri, you're ending up in a race-winning car to challenge for the championship. We've all witnessed Red Bull struggling to find drivers to fill up their seats in recent times, so Hauga is perfectly positioned to pounce if he can finish the F3 season strongly and have a good F2 season next year. So will the Norwegian flag finally be flown in F1 very soon? Well, this decade has definitely the best chance of that happening in F1 history, but you can never predict anything in motorsport, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the upcoming years. Another thing I'm interested to see is if you're subscribed, so if you wouldn't mind checking and tapping the subscribe button if you did enjoy the video, and you might as well tap the bell icon while you're down there. But thanks for watching, there are a couple videos on screen now, have a nice rest of the day everyone, and goodbye.